Hi, welcome to this Junos Learning Byte on JWeb. My name is Gordon Mosley, an instructor with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. I first want to start by explaining what JWeb is. JWeb is a web interface that we can use to manage our Junos devices, our switches, routers, our SRX firewalls, but what we need to do is enable it inside of the configuration. I'm going to connect to an SRX240 device. We're going to look at the configuration and, and, and see what's enabled on it. I first need to go under Edit System Services in the configuration, and I'm going to run a show command. I just want to see that what, what's turned on, and currently on this device, JWeb's not enabled. The only management services turned on are Secure Shell and Telnet. So to add JWeb as a management service, I would run a set web management command. I'm going to throw a question mark at it just to show you a couple of options. We can enable this using the HTTP or the HTTPS protocol. Now, now since we're going to be providing administrative credentials, I'm going to you know, enable HTTPS, and that requires a digital certificate. So I can add the system generated certificate switch to the end of this command, and it will generate its own digital certificate that I can use when we authenticate. So now I have SSH, you know, Telnet, and, and now with the added configuration, I've enabled JWeb. I'm going to go ahead and commit the configuration. Now there's another piece of information I'm going to need. I'm going to administer the device remotely with this, so I'm going to need an IP address. So after this commit takes effect, what I'm going to do is run a, a show interfaces command to try to find an IP address that I can use to administer the device. So I'm going to run a show interfaces terse command on here and it's going to hopefully show me I'm going to use the 10.210.14.135 address that I see here on the screen as the management IP so I'm going to open up a web browser and I want to HTTPS to 10.210.14.135 which should take us to our, our, our SRX now I'm going to get a, a warning message about this being a system generated certificate so I'm going to say yes here and it's going to take me to the login screen. Now I'm going to log in using the exact same credentials I would use if I was logging into a console port for example. So nothing different here about what, what information I provide to log in. Now, now once I log in I'm going to enter uh, the, the JWeb interface. And what you're going to see is the JWeb interface presents me with a series, a series of tabs here across the top of the screen. And I'm going to start out with the first tab, the dashboard tab. And this is a, a general kind of blue sky, you know, uh, uh, tab on this device. It shows me, you know, the front of the box. I can actually see what, what device it is. Uh, this is an SRX240. This is the front of the device. I can actually right click here. And in the menu that appears, I can view the rear of the device. So if I want to look at things, I don't know, power supplies, maybe fans. You know, some of the devices have slots and ports, you know, on the rear of the device. So let me go back to the, to the front. And what I can do inside of this interface, at least on the SRX, I can start putting my mouse over certain portions of the, of the device. For example, if a port is green, the, you know, the link is up, the port's enabled, I can get information about the name of the port. You know, if it's red, the port's not active. I can put my mouse over certain LEDs that I would see, and it will give me information about what is currently set, you know, on an LED on the screen, alarms, you know, is it online, is the device offline, for example. Down here at the bottom of the screen, I can get general information about, um, you know, the serial number on the device, what's the version of the firmware, what's the host name, when's the last time this device was rebooted. Um, I can see information about uh, the alarms. CPU, memory utilization. Let me show you the configure tab. Now when I click on the rest of these tabs a menu is going to appear on the left hand side of the screen and your learning curve is going to be where do I go in this menu to to configure for example what I'd like to configure. This is like entering configuration mode uh, if you're in the CLI. This is where I would go inside of JWeb to make changes to the device. For example, let me go under interfaces ports in the in the menu 
And, and over on the right-hand side, it's going to present me with a list of all the interfaces that are currently in the chassis. And I'll be able to, for example, select a particular interface, and then I can go on the right-hand side and I'll see Add. For example, if I wanted to add a particular port, edit a port, delete a port. I'm going to click on Edit, for example, just to bring up the properties of, of this selected interface. And this is where I can start you know, managing the configuration. I can set you know, descriptions. Since this is an SRX, I can assign the interface to a zone, configure IP addresses. You know, uh, again, just navigating the menu, is, for example, if I go under, I select uh, routing, you know, in the menu. And, and, and when it expands, I can do something like, hey, let me select OSPF. And what I select in the menu will appear over on the right-hand side. And this would be an example of when I would want to click Add. And it would bring up an interface that would allow me, for example, to add, you know, area zero, add an interface into this area, you know, and do a good basic OSPF configuration inside of this interface. Let me go to the monitor tab. This is like being in operational mode on the platform. The, again, there's a menu that's going to appear, and, and what I select on the, you know, menu will determine what I can monitor. And so just to be consistent, I selected interfaces again, and so I'll get a list on the right-hand side of all the interfaces that are currently you know, in the platform. I can select an interface, get basic information about it, you know, basic traffic statistics about that interface, or there's a details button I can select. And when I, when I click that, it's going to bring up an interface that will just give me, amazingly enough, more detailed information about that selected port. You know, what zone is it in? I can click on the traffic tab and get more detailed information about, you know, bytes in, bytes out, packets in, packets out uh, on that particular interface. Let me close this down, and I want to go now uh, to look at another tab. Let me scroll back up to the top, and let's go look at the Maintain tab. The Maintain tab is where I can do additional administrative work, you know, if I select Config Management I, I, in History. I'll see, I'll have the ability to see what the current configuration is on the device. I can see previous active configs, rollbacks, download this configuration. I can click on the upload option in the menu on the left hand side and I can upload configuration files. I can, you know, upload and install firmware, manage licenses, reboot the device. The last tab I'd like to take a look at is the troubleshoot tab. Even though this is a web-based interface, I do have access to certain utilities. For example, I can run a, a trace route. I can start a packet capture. I can ping, for example. So if I select ping, it'll give me the opportunity to put in an IP address, and I can start a ping you know, to verify connectivity. In conclusion, I've included a couple of, of links here that will help you learn more about JWeb. Inside of JWeb, there's a link at the top of the menu bar called Help. You know, clicking on that link will bring up a page that will help me understand the different tabs inside of JWeb, the different menu options on each tab, how to do configuration and troubleshooting inside of JWeb. And there's also a URL that will take me to the JWeb portion of Juniper's website that will give me a lot of the same information. Thanks for taking your time to listen to this Learning Byte on JWeb. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.